Brad Johnson here from Johnson.audio, and today I'm going to continue in my Pro Tools versus Logic series. Today we're getting into the Mix Window or Mixer Window. In the last video, we did a side-by-side -side comparison of Pro Tools Edit Window or Logic's Main Window, and today we're going to get into the Mixing Window. So this will help you decide what might be the best DAW for your Mac, because obviously Logic is an Apple-only product. So I'm just going to jump right into it. As you can see right here, I am in Logic's Mixing Window. It looks a lot like a mixing console. That's what it's supposed to look like. If you go over to Pro Tools, you're gonna see it looks very, very similar, just like in the edit window, and you're gonna find out it's the same with the mixing window. So we're gonna go back to Logic. I'm just gonna kind of give you a little breakdown. I have my tracks here all split up nicely. You can see over here, it tells you what they are. I have my input, I have my output, I have my, um, my effects inserts, I have my sends, my pan pot, and I have my fader. I over here have my input monitoring, record enable, my solo, my mute, and then down here the name of my track and color bar. And if I go over to Pro Tools, you're gonna see it's very, very similar. I have my effects inserts up here, my sends, I have my input, my output, I have my automation, I have my groups, I have my pan pot, input monitoring, record enable, solo, mute, fader, and then down here I have my name of my track. And over here you can see that I do have automation in groups as well. All right, so that's all pretty much the same. Now I do have the option to do pre-fadering. Right now I am in post-fadering, so if I wanna do pre-fadering, go to mix, I can click on pre-fader metering. It's really cool in Logic, it actually flips the meter over and that gives you that lets you know that you're in pre-fader metering. If you don't know what pre-fader metering is, I'm not going to get into it in this time. Don't worry about it. But in Pro Tools, I can do the same thing. Go up to Options, go down to pre-fader metering. It does not let me know though it's in pre-fader, so you just have to know that it is selected. Maybe a little bit of a knock on Pro Tools there. I like Logic's visual representation of that. Now here's another thing in Stereo Tracks over here. You have your different pan pots for, um, so you have your left and your right. If I go over to Logic, you have a very similar thing. And this is very cool because they just added this. It used to not be this way with Logic, and it really bummed me out, but they did fix it. And so now you can actually do the same thing, and it looks like this. And you can then play with the stereo panning, which is super cool. Uh, again, Logic was not... Um, very quick to add that. They had a plugin for it, but it was not very intuitive. I didn't like it. Um, Pro Tools, on the other hand, just added input monitoring for non-HD users. That is something, well, the button, I mean, it had it in the window, but it's something that they just added in Pro Tools 12. I'm very, very happy to add that feature. Um, I'm gonna move on. One another cool thing for Logic is you can do swipe for solo. You can do swipe for mute, like you're sliding your finger across the console. In Pro Tools, you cannot do that. It does not have that feature. So that's something that Pro Tools doesn't do, that Logic does, which is pretty neat. I'm um, gonna get into sending, sends and aux returns. So if I, wanted, if I wanted to set up a new send, I would go down here, I go to bus. If I click on four, super cool thing, a new aux track is created over here. It just automatically sets it up, it is routed to it, it is ready to go. I love that about Logic in Pro Tools. If I want to send or create a new send, I go to bus. I'm going to create a new send, bus five and six. I do not get a new lane or a new aux return. So I actually have to create it myself. And I'm going to create it. I have my aux. And then I have to set up the input to be what I send it five and six. And now I have it set up. I have to go through a few extra steps to set up my um, return. In Logic, it just does it for you automatically, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so far, it looks like Logic is a little more flexible than Pro Tools when it comes to the mixing window. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to keep continue to go. One thing that's pretty cool about Pro Tools here now is if I were to right-click it over here, I can do a lot from this window. I can freeze it. I can commit my track, meaning that all the inserts on it will actually commit to my track, and I don't have to use up CPU power anymore. I can just bounce my track if I want, rename it, duplicate, delete, do whatever I want. In Logic, I don't really have those options down here. Um, there are uh, windows up here, but again, it's not as um, comprehensive as Pro Tools. Another thing too with Pro Tools, if you click open 
the fader here. You do have up here, you have different buttons. You have a safe a so, or an automation safe button, which is pretty cool. You don't, in my knowledge, have a automation safe in Logic. You actually, um, and what automation safe does is just that if you click it, it'll actually prevent you from being able to write anything, any kind of automation on the track. And don't worry about if that, if you don't know what that means, I'm gonna get into automation and compare them side by side in a different video. But to move forward here, um, that is a cool little feature that Pro Tools has that I don't believe Logic does. Now, if I go over here and I hold this, you'll see I have post pan, post fader, pre fader metering for my send. It automatically goes to post pan, meaning that if I were to mess with the pan on here, it's gonna mess with the pan on the send. If I don't want that, I would go to post fader and then pre fader would mean that I could totally mute this channel that still gets sound in my send. Again, if it doesn't make any sense to you, this is not the video for it, just know that that is what all this these features here is for that. In Pro Tools, it looks very similar. I have FMP, which is um, Follow Master Pan or something like that. I've probably just butchered it and you can, you can flame me in the comments if you want, but this would be Post Pan. So this would allow, so now if I were to make any kind of adjustments here, it's going to make the adjustment on my send. Now, if, if I let go of this, it's gonna be in post fader, meaning that I will be able to control the pan separately, but the volume will still, if I have this muted, you won't be able to hear it in the send. And I can do pre fader, which will then, I can mute this and it still show up in the um, return. Now, so it has all the same features except for the solo autom or the safe automation. I think that is great. I'm gonna move forward. As you see, this opens up as a fader. In Logic, you just have this little wheel right here that you use. So it doesn't have a little pop-up fader like Pro Tools does. Now I'm gonna get into another little thing that's pretty cool. Um, with Pro Tools, if I were to hold down Shift, Option, Command, and say I wanted audio, it's one, two, three, and four. I wanted to do an ascending. Um, I wanted inputs one, two, three, and four. I could do it all at once by using Shift, Option, Command. Go up on the input, go to interface, do one, and then bam, one, two, three, and four. It's an awesome quick key. It works for the outputs as well. In Logic, there is no quick key for that, but if I wanted to do it, I could just start, create new tracks, create four new audio tracks, hit ascending, and I will get the same results. I can do that with the outputs as well. But I do like the fact that I can do a quick key with Pro Tools with this because what happens if I already have those tracks up and I don't wanna create new tracks, I can just do that really easy, really quickly instead of having to go through and do one, two, three, and four. So that's a really cool little feature that Pro Tools has. Logic has something similar, but it's not the same. Now I'm gonna get into one other thing here with the mixing window that is different for Pro Tools and Logic. Logic has this dedicated master fader. Now, you can do the same thing right here with Pro Tools, but the thing is, is that I can't really, if I were to create a stereo bus, meaning I were to send all of these tracks to one stereo bus, I'm still having to deal with the master fader, master output. I actually cannot it will not let me delete my master fader. And so with that, it's not a big deal, um, really, but it, the thing about it that I don't like is trying to set up reference tracks. Now, I already created a video for how to set up reference tracks that you can go and check out yourself, um, and you'll kind of understand what I'm saying. It's a really easy way to set up reference tracks to listen to just A, B, or mix, or your recordings against a professional mix. And it's this really intuitive way that you can do in Pro Tools that just Logic will not let you do. You might be able to do it in Logic in the environment, but I'm not even gonna get into the environment. The environment confuses me. If you understand the environment, then you are amazing and you need to create tutorials to teach all of us how to use that complicated environment. All right, so that really kind of goes through the, um, the mixing windows. Again, you'll see that a majority of the things that you can do in one DAW, you can do in the other. There really isn't much um, difference. If you're gonna talk about workflow when it comes to the mixer, I like Logic better than I like Pro Tools. But in the last video, when we were looking at this, I like to do most of my mixing in this window anyway. 
that I don't have to flip back to this because I can see everything over here. So, I mean, it really just depends. I don't really use a lot of the mixing window when I, when I work in Pro Tools, but I do like Logix better because it just, I love the feature of having a send just open a new return channel right away. It's quick, it's intuitive, but with Pro Tools, I do like the quick keys for being able to do the ascending on the inputs and outputs. I also do enjoy having my own pop-up fader and, you know, pan pot and everything for my send. Well, that is comparing the mix windows in Pro Tools versus Logic. I would love to hear your thoughts. Please leave me a comment below. I would like to know um, just your experiences with the two platforms if you have any. Um, if you have any more questions, just please ask. If you got anything out of this, please give me a thumbs up. I, I really appreciate it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. To all my other subscribers, I really appreciate your continued support. I am here to help you sing your story, mix your mission, and master your message at johnson.audio. I am Brad, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.